The trend of people buying homes just to turn around and rent them to somebody else continues to explode. In some major cities in North Carolina, a third of the homes that are sold go to corporations who then look to use them as an investment by renting them to somebody else. But most places you find on sites like Airbnb and VRBO are owned by people who have just that one place or maybe a few using it as a way to earn extra cash. Tonight, the Buckley Report takes a closer look at whether rentals and homeowners can coexist. For generations, owning your own home was the American dream. Now it seems owning a place that's someone else's home. Well, come right with me. At least for a while, is their new dream. This house was built in 1968. We bought it about a year ago. Stu Nichols owns 21 houses like this around the triad. My wife and I have been doing short-term rentals now for three decades, actually before Airbnb even existed. It seems what the Nichols started, dollars are following. Because to paraphrase the sage Pogo, we have met the future, and it's not hotels. Research from the Global Business Travel Association and the travel app Hopper show that millennials, the older of whom are approaching 40, travel twice as much as baby boomers and are three times more likely than boomers to stay in a home rental rather than a hotel. It's definitely on people's radars. It's Zach Matheny's job as the president of Downtown Greensboro Incorporated to promote economic activity. From a tourism aspect, we've got hundreds of thousands of people coming in and they need places to stay. But he also represents District 3 on the City Council, which includes the Fisher Park neighborhood where these signs are everywhere. Neighborhoods want to know who's going to be their neighbor. Is it going to change every night or every week? And will that degrade a neighborhood? For Fisher Park resident Cheryl Pratt, that word neighbor is the key. The short-term rentals are not our neighbors because they're owned by folks generally who don't live in the neighborhood and they rent them out as like little mini hotels. There's always going to be pros and cons. The question is, are we so afraid of the negative externalities that we don't want to capture the positive externalities or amenities that will come as a result of having short-term rentals? The upside is that I think it's vital to the tourist economy. There are a lot of knock-on effects of having a stronger tourist economy. Restaurants get built, bars and other forms of, you know, brew pubs. We all agree short-term rentals are here to stay. What we in Greensboro are trying to figure out is how best to regulate them so that we protect our neighborhoods but also understand and help the business. I think it's um, a question of how to properly regulate it. The city wants to ensure that an owner or manager is close enough to respond in person quickly to any issues. What's the magic number for someone to break even or make money? Most operators are, are striving for that 75 percent okay, occupancy. That's fairly high. It is. It's, you know, it's a lot of work. That's not a problem for Nichols, who lives near his rentals and believes that rental owners and neighborhoods can find something that works for everyone. The moral of the story is that change is hard, but we need to embrace it in a thoughtful um, way. It appears more thought is needed before everyone can live with this situation. Bob Buckley, Fox 8 News. In Greensboro, short-term rental owners pay the same occupancy taxes that hotels do, so the city doesn't lose money on them. But the council is currently looking to update its short-term rental policies.